The next is a 2014 question. The question reads as, which one of the following is a process involved in photosynthesis? So, before we go into the question, what is photosynthesis? Photosynthesis is basically capturing your sunlight by a green plant. There is sunlight taking in of carbon dioxide and then taking in of water. And all of these things are converted into carbohydrates and energy. And what is given out? Even oxygen is given out. Okay. So, now what is the question? Potential energy is released to form free energy. Free energy is converted into potential energy and stored. Food is oxidized to release carbon dioxide and water. That is clearly wrong. Oxygen is taken and carbon dioxide and water vapor are given out. That is also wrong. What is taken in? Carbon dioxide is taken in and oxygen and, uh, and water is not, not at all. You have oxygen and your water vapor that is given out. So, then last two options are wrong. Now, coming to the A and B, what is sunlight? Sunlight is a form of free energy. Okay. Taking that free energy, that energy gets converted into carbohydrates and everything and it is stored in the plant. That is your potential energy. Potential energy means something that has a fixed time, fixed space that it occupies. Because of its space and time, it has a certain energy associated with it. So, your answer to this question is B. Free energy is converted into potential energy and stored. Next is a 2014 question. The question reads as, which of the following adds carbon dioxide to the carbon cycle on the planet? Volcanic action, respiration, photosynthesis, decay of organic matter. See, they are asking which adds carbon dioxide. I had already told you in photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is taken in. So, will it add? No. So, anything that has option 3 can be eliminated. Next, you are left with 2 only, 1, 2 and 4. 2 is respiration. Now, look at volcanic action. What happens in a volcanic action? Whatever is deep under the earth, it's coming out in with so much of energy and heat. Don't you think in that process, you will have your, uh, you know, carb whatever is the carbon and carbon compounds underneath it coming out? Yes. So, volcanic action is also valid. So, your option which has 1 and 2 in it, is primarily this option C. So, your answer to this question is C, 1, 2 and 4. Even when organic matter is decayed, when there is dead decaying like humans and animals and everything, the carbon in our body gets mixed with the soil. So, there also carbon is getting released or carbon dioxide is getting released into the earth. So, your answer is C, 1, 2 and 4. The next we have a 2014 question. The question reads as lichens which are capable of initiating ecological succession even on a bare rock are actually a symbiotic association of, this is a very direct question, algae and bacteria, algae and fungi, bacteria and fungi, fungi and mosses. You have to know it to solve this which is your algae and fungi. Symbiotic means it's an association where both the organisms are benefited. For example, here the algae gets shelter from uh, its predators with the help of the fungi and the fungi on the other hand gets food from the algae and that is their association over here. The next is a 2013 question. Which of the following add or add nitrogen to the soil, specifically to the soil. Excretion of urea by animals, burning of coal by man, death of vegetation. Now, there is only a catch over here. Remember, it is being asked to the soil. So, excretion of urea by animals, yes, when you are, there is excretion of urea, you have ammonia and everything passing into the soil. It is nitrogen. Option 1 is relevant. Burning of coal by man. See, burning of coal actually releases nitrogen oxides. But to the soil, no, to the atmosphere. So, this is the reason why second option is not valid. And third option is death of vegetation. Again, when something that has nitrogen dies, obviously that nitrogen will get broken down and it will enter the soil. So, the answer to your question is 1 and 3 only.
C, 1 and 3 only. In the next, we have a 2013 question. With reference to the food chains in ecosystems, which of the following kinds of organisms is or are known as decomposers? There is virus, fungi and bacteria. Select the correct answer. See, fungi and bacteria we very commonly hear as decomposers. Virus will not be able to act as a decomposer. Why? Because virus to even be active, for it to be a living organism, it needs to be in touch with living matter. So, therefore, it will not have much to do because in its when it interacts with a decomposing thing, the virus remains as a crystal itself. So, what happens is virus is eliminated. The answer to your question is B, 2 and 3, which is fungi and bacteria. Next, we have a 2013 question. The 2013 question primarily reads as, with reference to food chains and ecosystems, consider the following statements. A food chain illustrates the order in which a chain of organisms feed upon each other. Food chains are found within the population of a species. A food chain illustrates the numbers of each organism which are eaten by others. What is a food chain? A food chain basically shows the sequential arrangement of what gets eaten by what. So, if you have, you have grass, grass eaten by rabbit, rabbit eaten by fox, fox eaten by maybe like a tiger or something. This is the sequential arrangement. So, yes, it illustrates the order in which the organisms feed on each other. That's the first one. Second thing is food chains are found within the populations of a species. If you have food chain, it basically basically says that, okay, the rabbit will eat another rabbit and you, uh, your human will eat another human. Is that possible? If it's possible, what happens is all the species will eat other each, each other and the species will get extinct. There is no survival happening. There will not, and when survival doesn't happen, there will not be any evolution happening. So, no, food chain cannot be found within the population of a own species. So, second one you can eliminate. And the answer over here is one only. A food chain illustrates the numbers of each organism which are eaten by others. Yet, yeah. you cannot have that. Why? Because you are just showing the arrangement. You will not know how many of the rabbits are eaten by the fox. You will just know the fox can eat the rabbit. So, the answer to this question is one only. The next, we have another 2013 question. Which one of the following terms best describes not only the physical space occupied by an organism, but also its functional role in the community of an organism? Ecotone, ecological niche, habitat, home range. So, let's get this right. You have a term called as habitat. The habitat is basically the area in which an animal, which an organism lives. But you have a term even bigger than that which has determined the habitat and that is your ecological niche. Niche is basically the function an organism has in its community. If you have a certain function, you will be occupying a certain space according to that. So, if your function, if the lion's function is to eat the deer in a certain area, its habitat will also be quite near to it. So, from your niche, from the concept of your ecological niche is where all the others stem into your habitat, home range, all of these others. So, the first thing is your niche. So, this describes both the physical space and also the functional role and that is what is your ecological niche. So, the answer to this question is B.